You guys know, in business, reaching that next milestone can be pretty difficult. Getting from 1000 or 10000 or $100,000 is not easy to do. But once you're able to get to that level, it's much easier to scale to the next point. What do I mean? You make your first $1,000, it's much easier to get from 1000 to 2000 than it is to get from 100 to 1000 So today I want to share some of my lessons and mistakes that I made and learned and tell you guys how I made my first $100,000. By the way, my name is Isaiah King. Uh, I'm a reseller. I have been reselling sneakers for over seven years. My business, Sneakers by Isaiah King, has done over a million dollars in the past year and a half. And uh, I just want to share with you some of the information I learned to make it easier on you and your journey. Listen, I get it. It's scary to try to imagine how to scale from 10,000 to 100,000. Uh, I know when I only had $10,000, the idea of 100,000 felt like it was going to take me forever. Uh, but once I got there, I kind of didn't even realize it happened. It was just something that kind of happened. But there's a lot of challenges that go into that. I'm sure you guys know of just being scared of getting to that point, wondering and trying to understand, am I good enough to reach that level? Um, do I have the mindset that it takes to reach that level? Because scaling from 1,000 to 10,000 is pretty hard. Scaling from 10 to 100 is also pretty hard. So you have to have the mindset to get to that point. So how did I get there? What, what's the plan here? What's the framework? So from 14 years old, I started reselling sneakers. Um, I was flipping shoes out of Play-Doh's closets, um, Goodwills, stuff like that, Facebook Marketplace. I had a couple hundred bucks. Every birthday, I'd ask for shoes, and then I'd flip them. I'd get in trouble because the shoes I would get for my birthday, I would flip. Um, and then during my high school years, I started working a job selling shoe cleaner. And um, what I was doing is I was cross-promoting my business while I sold shoe cleaner, making money, putting that money back into the business, funding it, and growing it from there. Um, and then when I turned 18 years old, COVID-19 hit, the world shut down. Uh, for a lot of people, it was really bad, but for me, it was a defining moment in my business. Um, during that time, I, I want to tell you a little bit of a cool story that happened, a deal that I got. Um, I had a $5,000, I had $5,000 cash, or no, it was $7,000. I had $7,000 to my name. That was all I had. Um, I was 18 years old. Um, I had made some quick flips in the past couple weeks to get from 1,000 to 7,000. And um, a guy in Mobile, Alabama hit me up. He was like, hey, Zay, I know you're buying sneakers. I have 140 pairs. I need you to come cash me out. Uh, let's make a deal. Literally, I was like, hey, man, um, I will give you every penny I have. That's all I can offer. This is all my money I have. I don't have any more. Um, can you do this? So for 140 pairs, I spent seven grand, and I walked away from that deal. Two days later, sold all the inventory made $14,000 in two days. So I, I actually doubled my net worth in two days with that. And that was kind of a defining moment for me getting one of those big deals that really set the framework and showed me, you know, I was able to do it. I'm able to buy these bulk deals. I need to start searching for more of these and taking me to the next level. Um, then I, I was able to quit my job very shortly after that point and I just started scaling the business, really nailing down what I needed to do, finding a wholesale client, finding my online people, my locals, and then starting to travel a lot for business. Um, and so from 18, when I had made that first $14,000 deal, it took me about, I want to say a year and a half to two years to get to making my first $100,000. Um, when I hit that point, it didn't really feel like anything. You know, once you get to a certain level, you don't really notice it until one day you look up and you go, oh, wow, I, I it just kind of happened, you know, because what I'm going to tell you about today, the processes that it takes to get to 100,000, you're never really thinking about, you know, oh, oh, I just hit this, just this. It's just, it's a rinse and repeat. You're going to keep going. You're going to keep working. And so you don't even realize it happens when it happens, but let's get on to the next point. Um, so that's the story, but how did I figure out how to do it? That's what happened, but how did it happen? Um, I took a job that taught me a lot of valuable lessons. So I learned networking, I learned sales, I learned negotiation, I learned how to feel comfortable and talk and use my own voice um, and present myself to people in the way I wanted to. It taught me a lot of those things. And because it was a commission-based job, I was not unfamiliar with working hard because you can't just sit there and be on your phone, right? If you want to make money being in a commission-based job, you have to work hard. And so this job taught me a lot about business, even though it wasn't my business, Learning how to run someone else's business from a management position taught me a lot. So I would say an asset that I can, I can share with you guys is if you're at the position where you're still not able to do this full time, take on a job that will teach you sets of skills that you can use to scale your business in the future. It is one of the most defining moments um, and pivotal points I would say in my life that was able to help me scale from zero to $100,000. Uh, one of the other key points that was able to take me from zero to 100000 was my mindset. Uh, what do I mean by mindset? I mean the, the way I look at the world, the way I frame my days, the way I feel about myself and the confidence I have when I go into my business. You know, there's a lot of times, I'm sure you guys experience this, where you don't know who you are, you don't know if you're able to do this. You have family or friends talking in your ear telling you, 
you know, maybe this isn't the right idea. You know, maybe you shouldn't start this, start this business. Maybe you shouldn't have this business. Um, it doesn't look like you're scaling enough. Maybe you should go get a job. My mom actually told me that. She said, I said, you should go get a job. You should go be a car salesman. Maybe this shoe thing isn't, isn't going to work out. Maybe we need to find an alternate route. Um, luckily, I had hammered down my mindset. I'm going to teach you guys how I really was able to get down to a super strong mindset. But, you know, there were points where I wasn't super confident. There were points where my mindset was a little rocky. I'm going to share with you guys in just a little bit on how we're going to get to that mindset and how you can help build and grow yours. Uh, but that mindset is one of the key developers for me to get from zero to 100,000. Number three that kind of helped me scale my business and get from zero to 100,000 is rinsing and repeating. So what do I mean by that? As soon as I was able to hammer down what I was doing, why I was doing it, the processes it takes to get to where I'm doing to make that money, it's just rinse and repeat at that point. I didn't change anything. I didn't go, oh, okay, I have a little bit more money now, so I'm gonna make a pivot. I'm gonna start actually doing this too and this. You know, I sell used sneakers. Now here and there I sell brand new, but for the majority of my life I've sold used sneakers, brand new sneakers and hype sneakers. I didn't do that. I stick to what I was good at and I scaled it, I rinsed and repeat, and surely, slowly but surely, I was able to get to $100,000 and it was able to help me scale my business and now that's still what I do to this day. Here and there I dabble in brand new, yeah, when it's a no-brainer deal, but I stick to my used sneakers because it is what's gonna help me rinse and repeat and scale over the next three to five years to make the most amount of money possible. And when it's time to switch it up, add things, I will, but I'm always sticking to my fundamentals in business, which is rinsing and repeating. So I'm sure you're sitting there, you're thinking, okay, Isaiah, well, that's great. Uh, you made money and good for you, but what do I do now to get from, you know, maybe you guys are at $1,000 watching this, I don't know, maybe you're at 10, maybe you're at 40. You're wondering, how do I get, how do I make my first $100,000? Three tips to help you guys out with that. There's a ton, right? I could sit here forever. I'm going to give you guys three steps that can help you get to $100,000. And then this is not just for 100, it's for 1,000 to 10,000. It's for 100,000 to a million. That's where I'm going right now. I'm working on going from 100,000 to a million. So no matter where you're at, these steps are going to help you guys out. Um, but I'm going to give you three things. And then right after that, I'm going to give you guys a bonus that's going to help you out as well. So I talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, number one, if you're still at the beginning stages and you're still developing your business skills and you're still at the point where you can't do this full time, go out and find a job that will give you the skills and tools necessary um, so that you can grow a business and get to $100,000. Like I said, I had a job that taught me sales, negotiation, how to talk to people, public speaking. I would recommend going out and finding a job just like that if you're starting out so that way you can go from zero to hero very quickly and once you start your business or you begin to grow it at the big points, um, you'll know and you'll have all the tools necessary to do so. Next is social media. Uh, if you guys aren't maximizing on your social media, you're, you're, you're losing out a lot right now. Uh, you should be making tons of content, videos. You should be on every platform possible, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat. When I was starting out making, you know, going from my zero to six figures, uh, what I would do is every day I'd go on the Facebook groups for sneakers. Now this can apply to whatever industry you're in. I don't know what industry you guys are in, um, but for me it's sneakers. So I would go to Facebook groups, um, you know, Instagram accounts. I had my Instagram page. I would promote on my Snapchat. Uh, I would go to trade shows and I would always be posting, hey guys, I'm buying, I'm selling, I'm buying, I'm selling, constantly letting people know, messaging everyone in my Rolodex. Hey, are you guys looking for this today? Are you need that today? What can I get from you? Do you guys have anything for sale? Growing your online and social media presence is so important because when you want people to come back to you, you need to have that online brand so they think, oh, I'm gonna go back to Isaiah. I'm gonna go back to King of Kicks. You know, I'm gonna go back to him every time. And also what I've had a, a few instances is when you have online presence, people will recommend you. You know, word of mouth, you guys have heard that in the terms of business, it's basic. Um, but let me give you a little story on that one. So because I was in my Facebook groups posting every day, Instagram posting every day, some guy, he saw my post and he called his friend, it was a woman, he was like, hey, uh, you, you have sneakers for sale, right? I got this guy, he's on Facebook, he's looking to sell, buy a bunch of shoes, Let's, let me connect you guys. So he connects us and she says, well look, I have my ex-boyfriend, I bought him all these shoes, we broke up, but I've got you know 60 pairs of Jordans in here, I don't know what they are, but you tell me the best you can do on them. I go in, I end up buying it for about $100 a pair, uh, like, like 40 or 50 pairs of them, I get them home, one pair alone sold for $1,300, it was a Dornbecker Jordan 6, I sold it the same night, and I sold many more pairs that night, I like made all my money back and more in the first night and still had a bunch of shoes left. Um, so getting out there, getting that word of mouth, growing that brand for you guys 
is super important because it's going to give you those kind of opportunities. It's going to keep people thinking about you, thinking to buy from you and sell to you, depending on what industry you're in. Number three for me is something that has just been a huge asset in my life is networking. This goes back to doing social media in one regard because when you're on social media heavy and you grow a brand for yourself, people know you, you get to network more through social media. But I think networking in person is super awesome too and important. Uh, I know that from traveling, I go every single weekend around the country to sneaker events. I network every weekend, I meet new people and every person I meet is a new opportunity for me to make a new customer, client, or potential you know, buyer. I could be buying inventory from them in the future. So networking is super important. A lot of my uh, buyers that sell to me now in bulk, I've met through going to events, networking at events, meeting people, buying from people, conversating. Networking is super important. It's what's gonna take you from having the people around you and the skills to go from zero to 100,000. If I didn't have all the people in my Rolodex that I do now to buy inventory from and sell inventory to, I'd have never scaled at the rate that I was able to. So that's super important. The last thing that I wanna tell you guys that's a super important tool, we touched on this a little bit earlier, is your mindset. Mindset is critical. It's super important. What I mean by mindset, I'll run through that again. Knowing and being confident in the fact that you can do this, having the the mental toughness and discipline to even when you don't want to do it, make sure you do it and always be in a state of scale, whether that be your business or your brain. You're always scaling your business and finding tools to grow it and you're always scaling your brain, reading books, taking courses, watching YouTube videos, learning from mentors, other people around you that you're networking with. Your mindset's super important. You know, they say, and I'm going to make a video on this later on, but they say you're the sum of like the three or five people you hang around with the most. I super agree with that. So what I did to really nail down my mindset, because I didn't have any people around me that I could just hang out with to, to feed off of their energy. When I was younger, I would, I would sit down with a pen and pad and paper and notes, and I would just watch Gary Vee. Um, at the moment, Ty Lopez was big. He's kind of a scam now. But at the moment, I was learning, you know, fundamentals of business from his course and his like videos. Um, Grant Cardone, watching their kind of videos. Now I do it with Alex Hermosi, um, you know, Dave Ramsey, and I would sit down and I would go, okay, here's the video, I'm gonna write the title of the video, and then what are the takeaways from this video? What can I learn from it? And that way I was always able to, you know, I see it, I hear it, and then I'm writing it down, I'm, I'm affirming it three different times. And it was really able to help me with my business mindset. And then I also watched people like David Goggins, Joe Rogan, Jocko Willink, to hammer down on that like toughness, that mindset of toughness where it's like, this sucks, but I'm gonna embrace the suck. You know, this, you think I wanna drive, you know, I, I know I don't wanna drive 30 hours there and back to Chicago in two days, sleep like three hours in two days total. It sucks, but I'm embracing the suck because I know that what's gonna come out of this is not only more mental toughness so that I can do these hard things again, but it's also more money for me to keep rinsing and repeating, making more profit to scale to the next level, and that's what I want you guys to do. Hammer down on that mindset. I'll make more videos on mindset in the future, but I'm just touching on it now as a step to get you to the next level. And I wanna go over a few common mistakes that I made that I don't want you guys to have to make as well. Let's talk about those real quick. Number one, spending your money on materialistic items now. I'm a little bit guilty of this now. I've got a, I've got a few nice pairs of sneakers um, and I have a few nice pieces of clothes, but when I was first starting out and getting to that ten to $100,000, your boy ate kids meals. My friends would make fun of me every time we would go out to eat. They'd be like, Zay, let's go to a nice restaurant. I can't. Let's go to Chick-fil-A. I'd get a kids meal. Oh, let's go, to a, let's go to a nice restaurant. Oh, give me a kids meal. I used to eat Miller's Ale House like once every day. It's just like a restaurant we have here. Every day I'd go there and eat because I'd get a $5 chicken tender kids meal every single day. And that's all I would eat. Was it the healthiest thing? No, but I saved a ton of money. Also, shoes. If you go back to some of my old photos on Instagram, I wore the same pair of beat up white Ultra Boost every day. It was the only shoe I had. I wore it every day for a year and I sold shoes. I had a, I had a 70 or 80 pairs behind me at that time. I could have worn whatever I wanted, but I wore the same ones every day to hammer in on saving my money. No expensive clothes, no expensive shoes. I was super stingy when it came to all that kind of stuff. Do not waste your money on materialistic things. It's from zero to 100,000 that's gonna get you to the point where you can scale massively. That's what I'm learning now. So save that money, invest it in yourself, in your business. It will save you tons in the future. Uh, number two, growing too big too fast. I touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, you know, there's been times where uh, I did try to scale and buy a bunch of new stuff that I didn't know how to do and try to change and add things to my business because I saw other people doing it. Uh, those moments were things that I lost money on. Um, not a ton, but I did lose money. Had I stuck to my fundamentals, I grew slow and consistent. I would have been a little bit more successful. I wouldn't have lost that money. But I'll give you an example of where I chose not to grow too fast too soon. 
opening a sneaker shop. There's been a lot of talk from my friends, my mentors, uh, my coworkers, my peers telling me, I say, you need to open a sneaker shop. Why haven't you done it yet? Um, after sitting down doing the math, seeing where I think we can go, the expenses, the overhead, the risk it takes, especially in this economy now where we have COVID potentially shutting things down, shutting malls down, shutting shopping centers down. For me, it made more sense to scale on my own and stay independent and really work on growing slower, doing it the right way, getting the tools, money, and skills necessary so that I can really kill a shop if I decide to open it one day, but making sure I don't grow too fast too soon and killing the fundamentals, getting to the point where I need to be with the business I'm in now. Uh, the last mistake that I wanna share with you guys is not branding enough. You know, there's a lot of uh, resellers I see out there. Let's say you're from my city, Pensacola, the, you got the area code 850, and your Instagram's like 850 sneakers, and you don't show your face, uh, all you do is post pictures of shoes, and that's it, and you're just selling them, that's it. You'll make money, people want shoes, man, you're gonna make money, but you're never gonna have that brand. I've had opportunities now where, um, you know, I've been paid to go to certain events. Um, people have sold me shoes saying, I wanted to sell you shoes. I'm so excited to sell you shoes. I've had people come to me to take a picture with me, which blows my mind. And it's not that I, I, I'm branding myself because I want people to take pictures. I don't care about that. But what I'm saying is that when you brand yourself, you show your face, you let people know who you are, they want to do business with you, you know? Think about it, like, the people that you want to give your money to and do business with, you do it because you love who they are. You're not buying Kanye West's shoes because they're the coolest looking shoes. We all know they're not. You're buying it because of Kanye, because you love Kanye. Now imagine if Kanye would have dropped those shoes without us knowing who Kanye was. Ain't nobody would have worn them. Branding yourself, letting people know who you are, sharing yourself with the world is super important. Brand, make content, let people know who you are and get yourself out there. Um, that's all I've got to share with you today. Now, I want you guys to do something when this video is over. The things I want you to do now, I want you to review your spending habits. Are you reinvesting all your profits back into your business to help you scale to the next level? Um, are you buying materialistic items that you don't really need that you could just keep on the back burner? Um, I, I want to know, are you doing that? Maybe you are. Maybe you're okay with that. Maybe you don't mind taking a little bit longer to get to that point. But if you really want to go gazelle intense on scaling your business, scale back on the materialistic purchases. Okay? Um, stay consistent and driven. This is super important. Every weekend, I'm finding pairs. I'm traveling. I'm being consistent with the content now. I've been, I've been up and down on my content, but I'm trying to stay consistent, stay driven, make sure that I get content out so I can brand myself and grow the business. You guys, make sure you stay consistent and driven. Watch people like David Goggins, Jocko Willing, Joe Rogan, and listen to them and watch their stories and let that motivate you to stay inspired and motivated and know that your competition is working just as hard, if not harder, so you have to beat them by staying consistent and driven. The last thing I want to say, which I touched on earlier, is network and travel. You go around the country, you meet people, you go to events, you meet customers, buyers, sellers, and everything in between. You're going to level up by networking and meeting those people. Um, I have... I've made thousands of dollars by traveling and meeting people that in the future I was able to do future business with. I'm going to give you a little example real quick and then we're going to get out of here. I went to Chicago this past week and I bought 70 pairs. I was pretty bummed out. I wanted to get more than that. But while I was there, I met a man who's next week going to sell me 200 pairs. And that only happened because I networked and traveled and it was still a successful trip regardless. Make sure you guys are networking. Make sure you're traveling. Use all of the skills, lessons, and do's and don'ts in this video that I taught you today for, to scale from 1,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 100,000, or join me and let's get from 100,000 to a million. I am always here. The comment section's open below. If you have any questions, all you gotta do is comment that below. Find me on Instagram at sneakers by Isaiah King. And uh, I'm on there as well. And I'm always willing to hop on a Zoom call with anybody that needs help, anybody that can learn from my lessons. I know I'm not a millionaire. I know I'm not the biggest reseller in the game, but I have acquired a lot of knowledge and I would love to share it with anybody that needs it. So hopefully you guys found a lot of value in this video. If you did, make sure to like the video, subscribe. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Sneakers by Isaiah King and tune in for the next one. All right, you guys, take care.